I don't think I can do this. It's looking right at me. Babe, he's not looking at you. His eyes are little withered husks. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're looking at the most hilarious moments and episodes in CBS's Ghosts. The ghosts are sort of my thing. Oh, because you can see and hear them. Yeah, yeah, way to rub that in my face again. Number 10, Sam's mom. What's a cheese hurricane? It's what made my heart explode. Might have to get that. Oh. Years before the show begins, Sam's mom ends up the victim of a nasty shellfish allergy, and Sam and Jay leave the manor to find out if she became a ghost. But apparently nothing I ever do will be good enough for you, mom. Uh, she calls me mom. It's like, bro, it's a TikTok thing. She did, but they don't have the easiest relationship. Cue Sam's mom deciding that she needs to reconcile with her daughter in order to get sucked off, aka move on to the next stage of the afterlife. So you're saying if I have some kind of a breakthrough with my daughter, I could finally get out of this hellhole. While Jay gorges himself on Mexico-adjacent food, Sam and Cheryl bicker over Sam's career and how Cheryl is being disingenuous. The real comedy comes from the waiter repeatedly thinking that Sam's tirades against her mother are actually directed at Jay. You didn't mean anything you just said. What's happening? I can't believe you would say all of those things just to get sucked off. Busted. Number nine, Yelp. Let me tell you something about your polite Midwesterners there. They can be very tricky. And this is 18 years in the travel agency game talking. By season two, the B&B is open and has its first guests, Tom and Debbie. But Pete determines that they're not being totally honest. Though Sam and Jay initially want to give the guests privacy, curiosity wins out, and she sends the ghosts to spy on them. I found Tom and Debbie's Yelp profile. Jeez, look at these reviews. These people are vicious. They soon find out that Tom and Debbie are impossible to please and notorious Yelp reviewers. But the best moment is when Sam reveals she's been spying on them, and it comes out they don't even know their Yelp profile is public. No, we can see your names and pictures. Uh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, that is what we see on our right. computer. They think they've been leaving anonymous reviews the entire time and resolve to go into hiding. Oh my God. Oh my God, we went after everyone. Oh there. no, we tore apart your sister's shrimp shack. This oh. is a nightmare, we oh. have to move. Number eight, Thor's best friend. See, he's been doing this like an hour. Uh, I can't uh, sleep like this. Have you tried waking him up? I'm not gonna do that, he could split me in two with his ax. Sam persuades the ghosts to start rooming together so that there are enough free rooms for the guests. This leads to chaos though, as nobody wants to bunk with Thor, who has been having night terrors for centuries. In dream. Thor in vast plane with best friend Oscar. So I'm in a vast plane with my friend Oscar. He's Norwegian. Jay has the idea to bring in a therapist and persuade Thor to go to ghost therapy via Sam, leading to some bizarre interactions. We discovered that Thor is haunted by dreams of the brutal murder of his dearest friend at his own hands. Thor's so hungry, I, I even eat his tail. Sorry, did, did you say tail? What is so strange? Who's got a squirrel? What? Oh my God. A squirrel! <laughs> and then we discover that his friend was, in fact, a squirrel eaten for food. Alberto wants to talk to the therapist about some strange dreams she's been having about Jason Momoa, too. Go on, ask her. What I'm wondering is, is there a way that I could make these dreams happen more often? Number seven, The Ghost Trap. The Ghost Trap 2000. I ordered it on the internet from a Latvian company that specializes in ghost hunting equipment. Sam and Jay briefly employ Freddy to help them with the business, only for him to set up a security camera that captures evidence of the paranormal. Convinced the house has ghosts, he buys a ghost trap and sets it up in the kitchen, with an Oreo as ghost bait. It does look rather scrumptious, though. I wouldn't mind taking a little whiff. Mm -hmm. Yes, a whiff would be divine, but one would need to get very close to properly smell the cookie. Remarkably, the Oreo works, with the ghosts manipulating Thorfinn into grabbing it, getting him stuck in the trap. Panic ensues, and Flower gets pulled inside, too. Oh my god, you guys! Thor's stuck in a ghost trap! Wait for it. Oh my god! I'm in here with him. Only when Jay determines that it'll break if it's overloaded with three ghosts are they able to be freed, with Pete escaping yet another attempt from Thor and Flower to make him their third. <laughs> Number six, 
Alberta's biggest fan. I'm actually the head curator of the Alberta Haynes Museum in Altoona, Pennsylvania. A historian named Todd introduces himself to Sam and Jay. He's opened a museum dedicated to Alberta and solving her murder, and visits the house to conduct research. Slowly but surely, we learn that Todd's interest in Alberta may not be entirely healthy. Well, uh, actually, the museum is in my garage. Ah, as all the best museums are. Technically, it's my mom's garage. This amuses Isaac to no end, since he spent the whole episode jealous that Alberta had a museum and he didn't. When Todd pulls out a toenail, everybody is horrified. Sorry, what am I looking at here, Todd? It's Alberta's toenail. Oh, hell no! The antique toenail even makes his giant back tattoo of Alberta look slightly more normal. Best, Todd is a recurring character who keeps bringing his weirdness back to Woodstone. Oh, my God! Number five, Nancy. So, there were a lot of rumors going around today about how I didn't have a girlfriend, and about how maybe I just made that up in a blind, sweaty panic, but here she is, in the flesh. The rotting flesh. When the house discovers Pete's crush on Alberta, he tries to play it cool by convincing Nancy, one of the cholera pit ghosts, to pretend to be his girlfriend, in exchange for her living upstairs. He came downstairs trolling for sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. she's a joker, <laughs> loves to tell jokes. It's actually one of the things I like about her. Suffice it to say, nobody believes in Pete and Nancy, but she doesn't want to go back down to the basement, so he's stuck with her. She's infuriating, forcing him to sleep on the floor, and when Pete's room is given up for a guest, demanding he gets them a better one. You start standing up for yourself and get our room back, or I will tell everyone our relationship is fake and that you have a huge crush on Alberta. But she eventually forces him to stand up for himself and dump her, announcing that she's going back to the basement to keep talking about the water heater for eternity while keeping their lie intact. I'm going back down to the basement. Cause I just broke up with my very real boyfriend. And also, cause you all suck. And I'd rather be with the cholera pit people. Number four, Sass's flirting. I'm Lenape and I've been here since the 1500s. Lenape, I actually know a... Who are you talking to? I, I, I was uh, just practicing for our meeting. I... Sam gets a freelance job writing a piece about flour for the Ulster County Review. But while there, she encounters another Lenape ghost, Shiki. It turns out that Sass had a huge crush on Shiki when they were alive, but he was never brave enough to make a move. Well, I was in love with her, and I thought she was in love with me, so I killed a deer and brought it to her family. Sure. And then I never heard from her again. With Jay's help, Sam begins passing messages between Sass and Shiki, as Sass tries to strike up a long-distance romance. Sup? Cool you're still around, Shiki. Would love to hear the haps sometime. Maybe. That's, that's it. Jay tells Sass to play it cool, and they send obscure one-word responses back and forth while the paper editor is baffled at Sam's appearances. Shocking nobody, Sass and Shiki are not endgame. She had a response. Hey. Hey, that's it? Oh, she's good. Number three, Dungeons and Dragons. Lieutenant Colonel Chesham. Captain Higgentoot. Early on, we're introduced to the trio of British soldiers who live in the derelict old shed on the property. Clearly, there's a spark between the leader Nigel and Isaac, somewhat impeded by the fact that Isaac accidentally killed Nigel. While this is ongoing, Jay discovers that Pete loves Dungeons and & Dragons and convinces Sam to be an intermediary so they can play together. Are you telling me the cowardly sniper that took my life was you? Well, that, that was not at all my intention. When Isaac reveals to Nigel that he was his murderer, the dispute gets out of hand, and they need a way to resolve it. If we can't fight, then how the hell do we resolve this invasion? Hmm. If only there was some way to simulate actual combat! What? Damn it, I may have the solution. That's how we get to the American Revolution being renegotiated over Dungeons and Dragons, much to Sam's dismay and Nigel and Isaac's boredom. Oh, Isaac and the British commander are making up. Oh, that's nice. What did Isaac do? He murdered him. Number two, Trevor the Catfish. He used the kitchen iPad. I knew we needed a better password than 1234. You're right, I should have anticipated a ghost catfishing my sister. Wait, when Jay's sister Bela shows up at the B&B, Sam thinks they might finally have a chance to bond, only to discover that Bela has been catfished for days by none other than Trevor. 
Using his ghost power, Trevor has signed up to a dating app on the Arendaker's iPad and matched with Bela. You didn't think I could find a real man again, so you created a fake one to flirt with me and compliment my smile. I really meant that. They try to explain it, but in the process, Bela finds the iPad and resolves that Jay must have been talking to her to try to make her feel better from her recent breakup. In the end, though, they manage to prove to Bela that ghosts exist, Sam can communicate with them, and that Trevor is the one responsible. And like, could a ghost do it with a human? No, you know what? I'm not there yet. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, going down. He bounced off the vault door. <gasps> A surface that's impenetrable to ghosts? I love it when the mythology gets expanded. A hidden vault is discovered underneath the house. After finding out that the door is ghost-proof, Hetty works out the combination, and they find inside Elias Woodstone, Hetty's philandering husband. He died down there, and until the door opened, was unable to escape. Upon finding out that his home is becoming a B&B, &B, he resolves to use his ghost power, which makes everyone he walks through extremely amorous, to ruin the business. You two are looking good. Very good. Jay? What's going on? It's only when his evil plan comes to light that we're given another piece of the ghost lore. Hell exists, and you can be sent to it. Of course, they call this going down. just went down on us. Let us know in the comments which ghost is your favorite. Solving my murder doesn't even make the list. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.